All right. Meanwhile, we are going to start with the sequence and series. When you have any rule, that is a sequence. Of course, this is mathematics section, so no theory is required. Tell me, when do you get a p? When t2 minus t1 equal to t3 minus t2 and that is the common difference d. That is the common difference d. When is the sequence gp? When t2 upon t1 equal to t3 upon t2 and that is equal to r. When is the sequence HP when reciprocals are in AP? When the reciprocal terms are in AP? The sequence is HP. Alright. Fine. If the reciprocals are in AP, then the given terms will be called HP. Then, very importantly remember, if T2 is greater than T1, it is AP with D positive. If they say each term is greater than the previous. If they say each term is less than the previous, it is AP with D negative. If they say T2 is double, triple of T1, then it is GP with R equal to 2, 3, etc. which is greater than 1. If they say T2 equal to half, one third of T1, then it is GP with R is 1 by 2, 1 by 3, etc. which is less than 1. Very useful note. Tell me what is the general structure of AP? A. A plus D. A plus 2D. Dot dot dot. What is the general structure of GP? A. AR. AR square dot dot dot. Then my question is what is sigma? R equal to 1 to N. R. It will mean 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up till n, which is n into n plus 1 upon 2. Anyway, it's important. What is sigma r square for r equal to 1 to n? It's 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up till n square. And that is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 and that is upon 6. And tell me what is summation r cube for r equal to 1 to n? That is 1 cube plus 2 cube plus up till n cube and that is equal to n square into n plus 1 the bracket square that divided by 4. If I ask you what is sigma 2r plus 1 for r equal to 1 to 3, how will it go? 2 into 1 plus 1 plus 2 into 2 plus 1 and plus 2 into 3 plus 1. So it will be 3 plus 5 plus 7. So sigma is the total. Then my question is, for AP, for GP, for AP, Tn equal to what? It is A plus N minus 1 into D. For GP, Tn equal to what? A, R is to N minus 1. Then my question is here, Sn equal to what? N by 2, 2a two plus n minus 1 into d. And this is n by 2, first term plus last term. But by the way, this is Sn equal to what here? A, r is to n minus 1 over r minus 1 if r is greater than 1. A. 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r if r is less than 1 and is equal to n a 
if r is equal to one. And my last point before we start with the types is sum to infinity. This sum to infinity exists for GP if r is less, less than means strictly less than one, not equal to one. Strictly less than one. And that sum to infinity is A upon 1 minus R. That sum to infinity, the formula being A upon 1 minus R. Clear? Now, they will give you some sequences, they will ask you something. For example, if I ask you, if I ask you that S2 is 10, a is 5, then B equal to what? Something will be given, something will be asked. Now S2 is nothing but 2 by 2. 2A plus 2 minus 1 is 1, D, and that is given to be 10. But A is 5, so 2 into 5 plus D is equal to 10. D is equal to 0. But D equal to 0 means terms are equal, so it will just become 5, 5, 5, etc difference is zero. Correct or not? Something will be given, something will be asked. If I ask you that Tn is equal to 3n plus 2, is it AP or is it GP? How will I do? I just try to put n equal to 1 to 3. I will get T1, T2, T3. If differences are equal AP and if ratios are equal then GP. So, if I put n equal to 1, I will get t1, which is 3 into 1 plus 2, which is 5. If I put n equal to 2, I will get t2, which is 3 into 2 plus 2, that is equal to 8. And if I put n equal to 3, I will get t3, which is 3 into 3 plus 2, which is equal to 11. Now, differences are equal, so this is ap, with the first term being 5, and the common difference being 3. However, if I tell you that Sn is equal to 3n square plus 4n. See, I'm just constructing the problem right on the spot because it's very typical variety. Tell me what? Now, if I put n equal to 1, I will get S1. And that S1 will be 3 into 1 square plus 4 into 1, that is 7. If I put n equal to 2, I will get S2. 3 into 2 square plus 4 into 2. So 12, 12, 12 plus what? 8. That's 20. And if I put n equal to 3, I will get S3. 3 into 3 square plus 4 into 3. Now 3 square, 9, 27, 27 is it 39. But mind well, S1 is T1, so T1 is 7. S2 is T1 plus T2 and that we have got is 20 but this is 7 plus T2 is 20 therefore T2 is 30 and then remember S3 is T1 plus T2 plus T3 and that we have got is 39 but of which this is 30 20 so 20 plus T3 equal to 39 so T3 equal to 19. Now you can see T2 minus T1 equal to T3 minus T2 and that happens to be equal to what? It is equal to 13 minus 7 that is equal to 6. So this is AP with A equal to 7 and D equal to 6. Once you know that you can find anything. Clear? But if I tell you Sn equal to 4 raised to n minus 3 raised to n over 3 raised to n, now tell me how will you go? n equal to 1, you will get S1. Tell me what is that? 4 raised to 1 minus 3 raised to 1 over 3 raised to 1 is 1 by 3. If I put n equal to 2, I am going to get S2. <coughs> it's 4 square minus 3 square over 3 square. So 16 minus 9, is it 7 by 9? Yes. 
<coughs> and if I put n equal to 3, then I'm going to get S3, which is 4 cube minus 3 cube over 3 cube. Tell me what is that? 64 minus 27. Is 37? Oh, so it is 37 by 27. But mind well that S1 is T1 and T1 is 1 by 3. S2 is T1 plus T2 and this is 7 by 9. So 1 by 3 plus T2 is 7 by 9. So T2 is 7 by 9 minus 1 by 3. That means 4 by 9. And then S3 is T1 plus T2 plus T3. And that we have got is 37 by 27. But of which T1 plus T2. T1 plus T2 is 7 by 9. So 7 by 9 plus T3 is 37 by 27. So tell me T3 equal to what? It's 37 by 27. Minus 7 upon 9. So... It is 16 by 27. And now you can see that T2 upon T1 is T3 upon T2. It has to be equal. So it is 4 by 9 over 1 by 3. Will it be 4 by 3? And that being greater than 1, you can find anything. So this is a one type of example that Tn is given or Sn is given here to determine whether the sequence is AP or GP. The second variety is of word problems. And here you have to be very cautious, careful and watchful. Here remember, N is the number of installments. N is the number of installments. Sn is loan plus interest thereon. A is the first installment. Tn is the last installment. Tn is the last installment. Now if T2 is greater than T1, it is AP with D positive. If T2 is less than T1, it is AP with D negative. T2 is double or triple of T1, then it is GP with R greater than 1. And if T2 is half or one third of T1, then it is GP with R is less than 1. Now this you have to keep in mind forever. And the one thing you have to remember is that the Pth installment means TP and P installments will mean SP. P means SP. So they will give you something, they will ask you something, some equations will be given, some relations can be developed and you can find the values of A and D or A and R. Once you know A, D or once you know A, R, you can find anything. Clear? But these notations are important. Now in that, we saw some typical questions and I expect that one of them will come in the paper. A started walking one mile first day, two miles second day, three miles third day. B started for five days later, they can make it six days later. Well, five days later and he walked 12 kilometers every day, 12 miles every day. When will they meet each other? When will they meet each other? So we said in that question that for A, it will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up till N. And for B, it is 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus, but then N minus 5 times. Because he has started 5 days later. And therefore, this 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus N is N into N plus 1 upon 2. And 12 added n minus 5 times means 12 into n minus 5. They must be equal. Go from answer to question, you can get the value of n. By the way, remember, whenever n has to be found, you will go from answer to question. That was the one question that we saw. And that was very important. And the second question we said that the ball is draw from some height. It rebounds to one third the height of the previous. 
Now it can be half, it can be one third, it can be one fourth, it can be two fifth, it can be anything. But necessarily it has to be less than one. So, some of the ball bounces to one third the height. And it has been dropped from 48 meters. Then it will go one third up and one third down. So it will be 16 up and 16 down. Then it will be 16 by 3 up and 16 by 3 down. And like that. And then they will ask you what is the distance traveled before hitting the ground say for the 8th time. Now that distance is going to be 48 plus. It will be 16 plus 16 that is 32. It is 16 by 3 plus 16 by 3 that is 32 by 3. Then it will be one third of that. So 16 by 9 up, 16 by 9 down. So it will be 32 by 9 and dot dot dot. So for the first hit there is one term, for the second hit there are two terms, for the third hit there are three terms and therefore, right from the beginning of course, and therefore for, suppose they are asking you eighth hit, then it will become 48 plus sum of seven terms. In all there are eight terms, 48 is away. And therefore it will be 48 plus A, A is 32 then 1 minus r, r is what? 1 by 3, raised to 7 and over 1 minus 1 by 7, 1 by 3, that will be the distance traveled before hitting the ground for the 10th, rather 8th time. And how a distance is traveled before it comes to rest? It comes to rest only at infinity. So in that case, s infinity will be a upon 1 minus r. But remember, this is 48 plus s infinity. Because first 48 has to always to be kept aside because that is not the part of the GP. GP starts from this second onwards. So it is 48 plus s infinity. So it will be 48 plus a, a being 32. And 1 minus 1 by 3. So it is 48 plus 32 over 2 by 3. That means this is what 48 plus 48, so 96 meters it will go or whatever it is and then it will come to rest, theoretically. Clear? The one example we saw what about the pump, air is extracted from the vessel. There you treat it that problem as the depreciation problem and use formula for the depreciation. And the one problem that we saw was there is a pyramid shaped field and he has to make a plantation of say 300 trees. How many trees must be planted at the base? Let it be n. Then top is 1, next is 2. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up till n has to be equal to 300. So n into n plus 1 upon 2 is 300. And then by from a answer to question, you can get the value of n. Typical problems. Paper setters generally don't go beyond that. And otherwise the problem was very simple. The man has borrowed, say, 10,000 rupees. He has to pay them in the rain installments. They search that the second installment is greater than the previous installment by rupees 10 or less than the previous installment by 40, whatever. Clear? Hmm. So these are the word problems as type 2. Third was, might well insert, suppose three arithmetic means between, suppose two and ten. How will I go? If I want three arithmetic means, then it will mean two, a1, a2, a3 and ten. They must be in IP. So you have got two options, one to go from answer to question. So two and the given number should form AP. So for that matter, if the A choice is given to be five, seven and nine, then two, five, seven, nine and 10, this is not AP. So this is not correct. Whereas if the choice given is four, six and eight, then 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10, they form AP. So that choice is correct. 
So arithmetic means inserted in between them must form the AP. Geometric means inserted in between them are must form the GP. For that matter, suppose if I ask the question insert four geometric means between two and 64, how will that go? Then obviously the choice will be given and then you will say 4, 8, 16, 32 and 64, they are in GP. So that choice must be correct. Correct? The one type of example here in was, then that was the type number 4 which was very important. Find the sum of numbers from say 100 to 500. Those are divisible by 3, 5, 3 and 5, 3 or 5, neither 3 nor 5. So tell me for 5, 3 what will you do? Is 3, well, is 100 divisible by 3? No. So what will you do? 101, 102. So 102 is the first number. So 105, 108 will go to the last. Is 4, 500 divisible by 3? 499? No. 498? Yes. yes. And 498 is the last number. Now if 498 is the last number, tell me how many numbers are these? It's 498 minus 102 that divided by 3 because you are searching for multiples of 3 and plus 1. These many numbers are there. Plus 1. This is this is the technique. Then I want the sum of those n numbers. And you can say that this n by 2 first term 102 plus last term 498 will be the total that you get. Suppose that total is x. Suppose if I want those numbers divisible by 5, then 100 is divisible by 5, 105 go last, this is 500, so n will be 500 minus 100 divided by 5 plus 1. Find the sum of those numbers will be n by 2 into first term 100 plus last term 500, that suppose is y. Suppose then I want 3 and 5. Now when I want 3 and 5, you have to search for the LCM of 3 and 5, which is 15 here. But find well LCM of 3 and 6 is not 18, it is just 6. First number divisible by both. So for 15 if you search, 100 is not divisible by 15, but 105 is the first number divisible by 15. 15, say the table of 15 and where it comes beyond 100, there you just stop, there's 105. Yes or no? The next is going to be 120, next is going to be 135 and dot dot dot. Is 500 divisible by 15? Now that you have to do. 450, then 495 I guess. 495 is the last number divisible by 15, check. Yes. And therefore, these numbers are how many? There's 495 minus 105, that over 15 and that plus 1. Find the sum of those numbers will be n by 2 and 105 plus 495. Suppose that is z. And then when I want 3 or 5, I will just try to take x plus y minus z. And when you want neither nor, when I want neither nor, I will consider all. All means 100, 101, 102 up till 500. How many numbers are there? N equal to 500 minus 100 divided by 1 because you are searching for the multiples of 1 and that plus 1. Find the sum of those numbers which will be N by 2. 100 plus 500, this is sum of all. And this sum minus x plus y minus z is the total that you want. x plus y minus z you have to subtract from total of all and you get what you want is neither nor. 
क्लियर एंड द लास्ट टाइप वॉज सम टू इन्फिनिटी दैट वॉज द लास्ट टाइप नंबर फाइव एंड दैट वॉज सम टू इन्फिनिटी लुक हेयर सम टू इन्फिनिटी आई आस्क यू टू फाइंड द सम टू इन्फिनिटी फॉर टू फोर बाय थ्री एट बाय नाइन एंड डॉट 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 वेर एवर यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सम टू इन्फिनिटी द रेशो हैज टू बी लेस देन वन so take the ratio and you will find here that 4 by 3 upon 2 is 2 by 3 and is less than 1 so a is 2 r is 2 by 3 so s infinity will be 2 upon 1 minus 2 by 3 that is 2 upon 1 by 3 will be equal to 6 clear but when i have 2 minus 4 by 3 Eight by nine and dot dot dot. Now you can see that r will be minus two by three. R will be minus two by three, and therefore s infinity will be equal to two upon one minus minus two by three. That is two upon one plus two by three, and that means two upon five by three. That will be six by five. So positive or negative, you have to be careful. clear the one problem you had was sum of gp is 15 and sum of squares is 45 then what is the first term and what is the ratio now gp you take first term is and common ratio is r for square terms first term is square and this is r square First term is a square and common ratio will be r square. So obviously, the first case it will be a upon one minus r is fifteen, and a square upon one minus r square happens to be forty-five. These are the two equations. Very simple. They become mechanical after some time. But because this is with the square, I square this and is a square upon one minus r. The square is fifteen. Square is two twenty-five. So equation three upon two, a square. Upon one minus r the bracket square over a square over one minus r square is two twenty five over forty five. A square will cut one minus r square, one minus r the bracket square, and this is forty five into what? Five. This is five. Check. Therefore, it's one plus r into one minus r. Over one minus r, the square is one by five. But one minus r, one term will cut, and five into one plus r will be one minus r cross multiply. This kind of cross multiplication we used to do in the school. Barona? Well, it should be just five, na? All right. Then in that case, this is just five, so it will be five into one minus r. Check. And therefore, it will be. Therefore, it will be one plus r is five minus five r. So six r is four. R is four by three. That is two by. R is four by six. That is two by three. And when you put that in, a r equal to fifteen. It's a into two by three is fifteen. Correct, na? So a will be equal to fifteen into three by two. Whatever you get is answer that you want. You thus get a value and r value. Clear? Just try with these questions. Now there are typical problems. If the question is in terms of a, b, c, d, x, y, z, we take the values for them. If I ask you the problem like this, one into two plus three into three plus Five into four plus dot 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 n terms. Tell me what will you do? Take the sum of only two terms. Shortcut side told you a lot in this chapter. Take the sum of only two terms, which will be two plus nine, which is eleven, and put n equal to two in every choice where you get eleven is the right choice. At least the page full of questions are there on this in the module. So take n equal to two. I ask you what is seven plus seventy seven plus seven 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 plus dot dot dot. What will you do? So just take two terms. And what is this two eighty four? 
put n equal to 2 in every choice. Where you get 84 is the right choice. Tell me, and what do you do in the word problems? You go from answer to question. That's it. The choice that satisfies all conditions is the right choice. Please don't lose these marks in any case. Clear?